all men unto what? Him. Okay? Praise God. All right? So here we are in chapter 3, beloved. Chapter 3. Let's read. Chapter 3. I'm going to read from the Message Bible as well as the King James Version, okay? Um, just to give you some kind of uh, comparison of what we're reading tonight, all right? So chapter 3, verse 1. And it says, finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord to write the same things to you. To me, it be is not grievous, but for you, it is safe. All right? To me, it's not grievous, but to you, it is safe. Now, let's look at what it says in the Message Bible. It says here in the Message Bible, it says that, uh, and that's about it, friends. Be glad in God. I don't need repeating what I don't mind repeating what I have written in early year, in early letters, sorry. And I hope you don't mind hearing it again. Better say than sorry. So here goes. Alright? He said, I don't mind repeating what I said, but better say than sorry. Alright? Here goes. Okay? So now. Looking at this, I'm going to go verse for verse, and I'm going to skip a little bit, but let's go verse for verse. Verse for verse, the first verse here, and verse 1, he starts off with what? The word what? Finally. Now, let me tell you this. If you look at it, you can tell that this is not the end. All right? Finally means, okay, let's get to the really important stuff. Now. Finally. Here we go. We get to the gist of stuff. We get to the things that need to happen, the things that I really need to, really need to, to tell you tonight. Okay? So he says, finally, it is very important, all right? This is my main part, part, part that I need to tell you. He says, my brethren, what does he say? Rejoice in the Lord. Why does he tell them to rejoice at the beginning of this? Be happy to rejoice. Why does he tell them that? Anybody else? There's no right or wrong asking here. Just, 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 just talk. Just learn. Why does he tell them to rejoice? Be glad those of you who are watching my Facebook, if you have a comment, I'm watching so I can see what you say, okay? Why does he tell them to rejoice? He tells them, okay, I need you to always remember to rejoice. You will see this again, too, in, in the latter part of this. He says, rejoice. Why? In other words, he's saying, beloved, don't let stuff get to you. Being saved and being a believer is meant to be a happy thing. It's meant to be joyous. I don't know about my child, but when I was growing up, it didn't seem so happy. It didn't seem so joyous. Huh? We, 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 we had very much restrictions and rules and we had to wear long skirts and all that other stuff. But I'm glad that I know now that God looks at the heart and not my outside. Remember we talked about that on Sunday? Amen. Huh? He, Paul, tells him, look here. You won't go through something. You might be going through something right now. That's right, Sister Lou. You might be going through something right now. You're going to go through something. You haven't gone through something yet. And I need you to always remember to read your Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I tell you to reach up. It's going to get hard. It's going to get tough. But you still got to put a smile on your face. And not, 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 wait a minute, not just any smile. He wants you to still be authentic in what you do and how you do it. I'm going through, but you know what? I still got joy. Uh, not, not the facade that we sometimes put on our face when we come into the sanctuary. You know, we see people. Y'all know how y'all see people. Y'all like, oh, I don't really like that, but here she comes. Hey, girl, how you doing? No, not like that. He wants us to be genuinely happy when we see one another. Genuinely happy when we're going through something. Can the church say amen? amen. Can you be genuinely happy even when you're going through? Well, how can you be genuinely happy when you're going 
ele toma isso tudo? Tá? How can you be genuinely happy when you're going through? Because you understand that what you're going through, first of all, won't last always. Right. That's the first thing you must remember. What I'm going through is not going to last always. All right? Secondly, even though I'm going through, guess who's always here with me? God. So even though I'm going through, even though it's a trying time, even though, even though, even though, even though, God is with me, and trouble don't last always. Y'all don't know that song. Y'all like that song. Y'all be, hey, trouble don't last always. Y'all got to understand and remember that when you go through and you don't feel like putting a smile on your face, so what? Trouble ain't going to last always. That's something to be happy about. You might not be happy about the situation, but yet I'm being happy because guess what? This ain't going to beat me all the time. This ain't going to beat me always. Hallelujah. Here it is. And then he tells them, he says, rejoice in the Lord always, even when you say, when you're going through, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to let you know, I'm going to let you know, now you're going to go through now. And I told you. Right. But you still got to be happy. Mm -hmm. Still got to be genuinely rejoicing in your spirit. All right? And then he says to them, he says, I'm writing to you the same stuff. Why? Why? Why is he writing the same stuff? Why is he having to say the same stuff over and over Thank you. Hallelujah. So you can get it. Amen. You got to be able to get it. A lot of times we, we don't get it. We hear it again. We don't hear it. How do you learn? Let me ask you this. How do you learn? Do you get it? You got to do it over and over again. He gives you a little bit now. That's why every time, every time you do a Bible study, I'm reviewing. I'm reviewing what you should have learned already. And then I'm giving you a little bit more. And then I'm going to come back and review it again. He's saying, I'm saying the same things over and over again. And he said, you know what? I'm sorry about, you know, I, I'm sorry I have to repeat myself. I don't mind having to repeat myself. But I need you to know, you know, that, that it's better to be safe than sorry later. I need you to get it. I know sometimes we don't like to hear, we don't like to be busted that over and over again. I know I've said probably the same stuff over and over and over again, but it seems like they do the same thing over and over and over and over again. Amen. But you got to understand that until you get it, you're going to hear it over and over again. And after you, you get it, you still going to hear it over and over and over again. It is for your good, not for your hurt. Again, God wants us to be doers and not just hearers. You can hear all day long, but you ain't doing nothing. But if you hear and start to put it into practice, that's the only way that it's going to begin to manifest and to be a part of it. Thank you. You got to apply. It takes a person 66 days for a new behavior to become automatic. 66 days for behavior to become automatic. And it takes um, 18 to 254 days for a person to form a new habit. That's right, 254 days. I was like, what? And so, beloved, don't, don't stress yourself out when you don't get it the first time. That's right. If it takes you a year to get this one simple thing, if it takes you a, a year to understand how many books are in the Bible, to understand, you know, who said what, when, where, how, it's okay. Just like I've explained to you, if you've been on the website, I've explained to you in our, our, new, members, uh, our new members classes where we're talking about Bible study and we're talking about, you know, uh, um, um, the Word of God. It's the one that talks about the Word I can't remember the other one, but it talks about three things. And I tell you, you've got to get in your word mm -hmm. right. and begin to read. And it's okay if you don't know. Beloved, believe it or not, I, I can't remember certain things. And it's because of an injury that I can't remember certain things. All right? It's because of an injury I can't remember certain things. And so 
it aggravates me when I can't even remember certain scriptures that I used to be able to remember. I know I know it, but I can't remember it. And so I go back over and over again. I keep saying it over and over again. I keep doing it over and over again, hoping that it'll come back and get it right Don't get upset that you can't get it right away. Everybody just can't get it right away. Some of y'all will take y'all 18 days, and some of y'all will take y'all 254 days. Amen. However long it takes you, don't give up. That's right. He goes with them, verse 1 of Philippians chapter 3, and he's telling them that don't, first of all, this is, this is where we get to the point. You've got to rejoice in whatever you do. And I know I'm saying the same thing over and over again. But it's okay for me. But I need you to get it. Better to be safe than sorry. Absolutely. Verse 2. He says, beware of dogs. Mm. Beware of evil workers. Beware of concision. Let's read it here. He says, stand still clear of barking dogs, those religious busybodies. All bark and no bite. Now, this is what I did. Let me bring this to your, 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 your uh, attention right now, okay? If you see the King James Version, right? How it's worded? And you see I'm reading the Message Bible. I'm not quite sure when the Message Bible was translated, but you see how it, how it, how it reads? We now say phrases like all bite and no bark, all bark and no bite. Right. They didn't say that back then. Y'all understand? Mm -hmm. And so you have to be careful about the versions that you read and the versions you know that you hear these phrases because some of these phrases and some of these words were not used in the King James in the in the Hebrew. Uh, not let me not say King James, but the Hebrew language and the Greek language. Okay. All right. So he said, "All bark and no bite, and all and all their interest in is, is appearance. Night can't be circumcised. I call them the real believers." All right. Let's stop right there. Here it is, beloved. That um, first thing first, he calls them dogs. Dogs. Is he really talking about dogs? No. no. He's not really talking about dogs. He's really talking about a group of people called the Judarius. 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 James is on the screen. Judarius. All right? That's who he's talking about. Now, who the people is? Those people were the ones who their main doctrine was that you not only need to believe in Christ, but that also you needed to keep the law, especially circumcision, or you cannot be saved. Paul calls them dogs because he needs you to understand that they are the ones who talk a good game, but that ain't even about. Now, you ever seen a dog start barking at you and you jump at the ball? Dog jump? Say so. Or, or, or start running? <laughs> That's who these people are. They, they're the ones who, 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 who can tell you a good stuff. They're a group of legal. Let me give you the good term. They are a group of legalistic Jews. Okay? Let me be nice tonight. They are a group of legalistic Jews. They are a group of legalistic Jews. They believe in the gospel, but they add their own twist and turn to it as well. Right. Remember I told y'all to be careful about that? Mm -hmm. Remember I told you that's why we also got to be careful about the word that we get, and we got to make sure that the word that we're reading and stuff like that, that, we, that it's actually authentic mm -hmm. and it comes from the real source and not what these other people, because believe it or not, beloved, you still got some Judaism, Judaism reasons. You still got some of them now who will take what they want to take and then they'll add their own stuff to it and put their name on it and say it's mine. Or say the Lord, the Lord inspired me to write this. <laughs> you got to be careful. You, gotta, you really got to be careful. So, so these people, as I said, they were them who took the word, they believed them, they believed. But then they also added their own laws and their own things for 
stripes and all that people be careful about them. Mm -hmm. And then he talks about this. This is interesting. He says, false circumcision. What was that? False circumcision. King James Burton says, beware of the circumcision. Now, we, we understand that it was a practice back then to be circumcised. That's why, you know, most men now, they get circumcised, right? right. Okay? Um, it is a, a form of cleanliness, right? It's a, it's a form of cleaning, cleaning, cleaning. Okay, be clean, all right? Uh, now, what their point was, make sure you get circumcised. Everybody, all the men get circumcised. But God's point was, when you are circumcised, and here it is, it talks about in verse 3, it says, but we, but we are circumcised which worship God in spirit. In other words, Paul was saying, we ain't like them. We worship God in spirit. And so therefore, our circumcision comes from spirit. Spirit is cutting away that are dead on me. Spirit is cutting away at some things that should not be inside of me. Spirit is cutting away some things that I don't need. That is causing me to be unclean. Spirit. But they were worried about flesh. They wanted the flesh to be, to be, to be circumcised as if the flesh was more important than spirit. But we who live in the spirit, hello, we're worried about and we're concerned about our heart taking off continuous delays, taking off those things that are not like God, taking off those things that, that, that keep me from being clean, hello, somebody, the spirit. They were more concerned about flesh. Paul warned about those. Because he needed us to understand that, that there will be some group of people who are going to try to get you to do this. And I need you to hear me. Stay away from them. Stay away from them that try to, they believe now. See, this is how people get you. Let me, let me talk to you for just a minute. This is how people will get you. They'll draw you in. Listen carefully. They'll draw you in by their belief. Oh, they believe what you believe now. Oh, yeah, girl, I believe the Lord is good. I believe this and I believe that. I believe in this. Oh, yes, I love the Lord. But then slowly and surely they start adding that stuff in there. This is what you got to be careful for. This is what you got to watch out for. Because this is what people will do. Have you ever seen, this is where you got all these other religions from. Have you ever seen people that just because they don't agree with one thing, they'll go and make another church. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. No, not, not no church, but another religion. But yeah, another church too. But another religion. That's why we got all these religions. Mm -hmm. Because people wanted to do things differently from how everybody else. Now I don't think we should we should we should we should wear we should wear pants. I think we ought to wear ladies ought to wear girls that wear, wear long dresses. And we can't go, we can't do that. So we go come over here and women with long dresses and and see and see my flesh can't handle all the makeup and them being pretty and all the tight stuff. So we gotta make sure they all covered up. Come on, I'm talking, I'm telling the truth. Right. We gotta make sure they all covered up and I don't want nobody to see. I don't want nobody to see my wife. So you can't have nothing on, you gotta have your face and everything else covered. I'm, I'm telling y'all the truth. You're right. This is what people do. Mm -hmm. Because they don't like this, because their flesh can't handle it. They'll go create something else and add to it. Oh yeah, we fall in all that, but see when we do this. We need to get that from. Right. Right. <laughs> they ain't in the word. <laughs> Will you, will, you, will you create that contraption from the concoction? Where do you get that rule from? Right. That ain't there. Right. That, this is what they do. And see, this is the other thing is that they also believe that by their works, they were going to make it into heaven. They teach people to follow the law, but it is impossible, beloved, to follow the law to the teeth. 
Matthew 11, 29. Thank you. There it is. Matthew 11, 29. See, I've got the other one. <laughs> see, we make mistakes. Right there, see? You see? I need the law. Hey, see? Matthew 11, 29. So Matthew 11, 29 says, Take my yoke upon me and learn of me. Learn of me! Because my yoke is easy. I'm, I'm a forgiving God. I'm a loving God. I'm a gracious God. Y'all people can give me because y'all people stuck in 
Um, yep, Philippians 3, 13. I'm going to talk about these two things because you often hear this, you heard this before. He goes and talks about, you know, um, um, what, what, what I'm going through and what I, what I had. It just can't compare to where I am and what, what God has done for me and what God is doing for me continuously. Because Paul in jail, remember I told you he was in jail while he was writing this. And so he's understanding, look, I ain't got nothing right now. <laughs> I'm in jail. So verse 13, look at verse 13 here. Verse 13, focus, let's focus on the goal. He says that, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended. What does that mean? Verse 13, brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended anything. Apprehended? I, 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 I don't know that. At the end of the day, all I know is being God. At the end of the day, all I know that is me and God. I know the education I got. I know what, what God has showered upon me. I know all that, but at the end of the day, it's still me and God. I ain't worried about that. I ain't worried about this. I ain't worried about that. I'm worried about my relationship with God. He said, now, nah, but things, but this one thing I do know. He said, now, nah, I ain't worried about that. He said, but let me tell you something that I do know that won't never change. He said that I am forgetting those things which are behind. What are we talking about? Y'all hear this all the time. Go ahead. His past. What else? It refers to his religious credentials, who he was. Remember, he was a Jew, and you know he had all these credentials, and he, you know, was able to do this and able to do that. You know, he had a, a little bit. Remember, I told you he had a little bit of, of everything in him. That's why he was able to do so much stuff and be into so many things and be somewhere and do this and go places that certain people couldn't go because of who he was. God knew exactly what he was doing when he when he sanctioned Paul. Because Paul could get into stuff that nobody else could get into. And there wouldn't be nothing said. And so the same thing, Paul said, I ain't, I ain't worried about my credentials. He says that he's also talking about the things that he lost. He ain't worried about that either. He, talk, he, he also talked about his past Christian experiences and past Christian achievement. Many of us, we hold on to what we did in 1969. Right. I was this to this to this to this to this, and we looking around like, what the heck was that? Oh, honey, 1969, I was this to this to this. Honey, do you know what year it is now? Right. We cannot hold on to the past because the past is already in the past. What are you doing right now? That's right. That's right. I can't have to let what, what, what was get me to where I'm going. It got me to where I needed to be. Now it's time for me to get something else and grow and learn and move on. He's saying his credentials. He's saying what his he lost. He's saying what his past achievement was and successes. I still got more work to do. It ain't time for you to give up and let go. Beloved, you still got stuff to do. I don't care how old you get. As long as you got breath in your body, there is work for you to do. Don't let go. Don't give up. There's still work to do. He said that he refuses it to let his guilt or let his past, the downfalls, the, the times that, 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 that he, he thought it was a disaster, fail him. He, he let it go all of it. A lot of y'all holding on to stuff. Holding on to your credentials. Piece of paper. They have to fit when you can't find that piece of paper. What about what's in your heart? It's, 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 it's a very interesting thing that sometimes a piece of paper ain't even what gets us to where we are. It's what's in our heart. It's where our heart is. It's how people see you. And, and the, 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 the funny thing about that also is that you can have a piece of paper and, 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 and people see you and it gets you or it don't get you where, but you can also not have the piece of paper and be and still be and you still be able to get where you need to be because God has put you there.
goal to reach. And he's referring to the goal of knowing Christ. It ain't about no materialistic things. It is about my experiencing, experiencing the power of God. Experiencing, you know, living and feeling the, the power of his resurrection. Beloved, as we stand to our feet and close tonight, Verse 14 talks about towards the mark. What is the mark? The mark is the objective. It is about our calling in Christ. I need to ask you a question tonight. What is today? I know it's Wednesday. But what Wednesday is it?
We thank you for being a just God and a faithful God. That Lord, you are not slack concerning your promises, even though sometimes we are. God, that you are not slack concerning your faithfulness, even though God, sometimes we are. God, we thank you tonight. Hallelujah. For you being the God you are to us. God, you're loving, you're kind, God. You, 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 what will, you're more than what we can ever ask for. God, and tonight, if we had the 10,000 tongues, it wouldn't be enough to praise you for. Because, God, you keep blessing us over and over and over again. We don't deserve it, but God, your grace and your mercy has been more than sufficient enough for us, God. We've sinned and we've come short, but God, your grace and God, we thank you, hallelujah. Our soul cries out, thank you, God, because we realize you didn't have to do what you did, but God, we're so grateful that you did. We're so grateful that you showed us your love. We're so grateful that you showed us mercy and you didn't condemn us, God. We're grateful tonight, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Yeah. 